Today's show is pre recorded. Y'all know what time it is. Y'all don't know y'all better act. Hat on, suit on, suit on, looking like a trap dog, giving them a Dress like a million bucks, but I'm in this cup. Mm-hmm. Y'all tell me who could it be but Steve Harvey? Oh, yeah. yeah. Listen to me. Mm-hmm. Put your hands together for Steve Harvey. Put your hands to the voice come on dig me now one and only steve harvey got a radio show oh man steve harvey got a radio show because god because god is simply amazing because god is off the chain because god is over the top because god is all that in a bag of chips god is amazing man god will take you places that you never ever thought you would go Oh, you know what? It, it Sometimes it amazes me when I'm watching uh, people talk about themselves and their careers and where they're at in life and things. And they and, and, and I hear people say, you know, always dreamed of being here. You know, I can understand when a person says that I've, I've always dreamed that of something like this would happen to me. But I want you to think about that for a second. <sighs> Did you really see it just like that, though? Did you really, really see it just like that? Did you really know that God was going to bring you through all he brought you through to get you to this place? Did you know that in spite of the losses along the way that would crumble the average person that somehow he kept you through it all and that's how you got here? Did did you think of, you know, I mean, I mean you know, you know, I mean, since you're so busy talking about yourself now, have you forgotten all the times he was bringing you through when you didn't see no way that you was going to get through? Do you remember that? So when you sit there and you say, I dreamed of this, this is what I always saw happening. I don't really think so. I don't really think if you take inventory, a real close inventory of your life, and you look back on it all, stop looking at the moment right now. Remember where you come from. See, that's what gets me emotional sometimes. That's what makes me tear up because when something is happening to me in the moment, it ain't the moment for me. It's the memory of how I got there. It's the recollection of all the things, all the nights, all the days in that car, all the times by myself when I felt like I wasn't going to make it. But somehow I'm standing somewhere and somebody passing out an award to me or somebody calling my name. That's that. Did you really think you was going to make it then? So, 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 So since you're talking about this is what I always dreamed of, did you really think? in those moments right there that you would even be standing here today. That's why I try to, I try to get people to understand, you know, and, 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 and this is kind of for young people today. Um, 
what I'm about to say, but then guess what? I Sometimes I had to remind myself of it, so I guess it's still kind of for everybody. You know, because I, w- I work with a lot of young people, and, 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 and so many times, man, young people just don't understand um, what all it takes. And I know that if you're a full-grown adult, if you're 40, you you really understand where I'm coming from because, you know, uh, you it's, it, listen to me, young people, or anybody that don't understand this, that you got to do some things that you don't want to do in order to do what you want to do. You have to understand this principle of success or else you are not going to become successful. I got what you want to do. I got your ultimate goal is this, that, and the other. I got all of that. But in the meantime, though, there are some necessary steps that you have to take in order to become successful. And you cannot skip these steps. You can't jump over these steps just because you, you want to be rich Friday. I got that. I got that. I, I, I Everybody got that. But if you want this, whatever you're talking about, whether it's money or success or fame or Climbing the corporate ladder or this is the position or you uh, all that's fine and dandy. P- please hold on to your dreams. Dreams come true. But in the meantime, let me remind you of something that you got to do some things you don't want to do in order to do what you want to do. Let's say you want to be rich and famous. Let's just say that's it for you. Let's sit down. It's a lot of other ways of being successful. Please don't think that's the only one. But I'm just saying, let's just say yours is rich and famous. And let's say some miraculous way, God made you rich and famous next Friday. Ta-da, there you are. You rich and you famous next Friday. Can I share something with you? This is not going to last for you. You know why? Because you have not done the things necessary. You have not done the things that you have to do in order to do the things you want. So now you're rich and famous. How you going to know how to budget money? How you going to know how to get up and, and keep clawing towards the top when you fall off your pedestal? See, you, it's so many things you got to know about something. And you think. Because it's what you want right now. It's supposed to happen just now. It's a process. When you ask God for something, please know God know the process. He know the necessary steps to take you through. Don't lose your patience with God because your dreams ain't coming true right now. Man, I, I, I you know, you know, I, I think the best way y'all is, is for me. I just use myself as an example. I, I really do understand why God has given me the life he's given me so far. I understand the being homeless part now. I get the not being successful when I wanted to part now. I get it. I got the delayed entry into the field of choice for myself. I got it now. I've been wanting to be on TV and a little comedian since I was a nine years old, but guess what? I didn't get there till I was 28. But see, I didn't get it then. I was mad at God. You, you, you know what I want and I'm sitting up here. Hey, I, I got exactly what you want, but I got this process I want you to go through to get here too. Because see, I'm finna take you somewhere you don't know nothing about. One day you're gonna have a radio show with your little stupid behind. You don't know this yet. I'm gonna bless you with a radio show. You don't even know it. That's why I say every morning, Steve Harvey got a radio show. Because see, I didn't, I didn't see this one coming. But see, God had a plan for me. It was in the blueprint of my life. So God said, what I'm going to do is I'm going to make your life a little rough for you. I'm going to toss you up a little bit. I'm going I'm to I'm let you make some of these stupid decisions you want to make, and I'm going to make you learn from them. I'm going I'm to... I'm going to let you be homeless for a little while. I'm going I'm to let you not get into your field of choice until you're 28. I'm going to have people talking about if we had only seen him when he was younger. I ain't going to let you get your first car in your name till you're 38. I'm going to make you go through some things because one day I'm going to put a microphone in front of your mouth and I want you to honor me. I want you to talk about me. I want you to tell people what I brought you through. I want you to give people inspirational moments where they can see that your life was jacked up for a minute and I turned your life around for you. That's God dealing with me. See, so now I finally understand why I went through the life I went through so I could have something to say. 
See, I ain't over here telling you about what I think will happen. I'm telling you what I know can happen, that God does make dreams come true. But sometimes it take a minute. Sometimes you're going to have to do some things you don't want to do in order to do what you want to do. All right? I'll let you. I'm going to be tripping today. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Ladies and gentlemen, it is time again to start it off. You know what? You can't start this day without being grateful. You really need to say thank you because you, 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 he did it again. He did it again. Absolutely the only one that can do it. He's given us a new day, a new opportunity, another shot at it. I'm going to take full advantage of mine. I will do something today to move myself towards happiness or success. Those are the two things I'm focused on, happiness and success. Now, notice I didn't say nothing about money because you can find happiness and success without that. If But that should be your goal today, happiness and success. Thank you, Lord, for waking me up this morning. Everybody else is listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Shirley Strawberry, Carla Frill, Mississippi Monica, Junior, and the legend that is Nephew Tommy. Yeah. Junior, yeah. Uh, what's on your mind today? I, that's odd you would say that. Uh, success, happiness is success. How do you find success without money? How do you figure that? Mm. Well, you got success. You get, I've had a lot of success without money. Because once you start the process to becoming successful, that that's, that's a huge jump right there. Do you know what stops most people from becoming successful is they never start. If you can just mm. begin the journey today, success mm. has already begun for you. What throws people off is they keep waiting to measure success when they get to the finish line. You can't do it that way because you don't know where the finish line is. There is joy in the journey. You have mm. got to be grateful at the levels. Thank you, God, for giving me the willpower, the desire, the fortification. I'm not, I don't know if that's the word. It sounded like one. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because mm-hmm. it sounds real close to fornication. So, yeah. fortification <laughs> to start. I, wow. I wanted to make sure I didn't say that. <laughs> no, you uh, I have done that. No, <laughs> I have. I have fornicated. fornicated. I have done that. I okay. Was, <laughs> I wasn't proud of it every time. Sometimes I was. Anyway, <laughs> great question, Junior. Yeah. I was going to yeah. say great answer, Steve. But, but uh, well, I'm not finished, though, Shirley. <laughs> okay. Finished. I got sidetracked because I thought I said the wrong word. <laughs> but once you start the process of success, Junior, that's huge for you. That's huge. That means you are on the way. So imagine this. Let's say you weren't pursuing your goals yesterday. And then today you wake up and you say, today is the first day of the rest of my life. And I'm going to be in pursuit of success and happiness today. That right there is a huge jump from yesterday. That you went from going nowhere to on your way to somewhere. That's a Mm -hmm. huge jump, Mm -hmm. man. That's a monumental jump, everybody. So make the decision, and there's success in the decision. The average person won't even do that. Man, enjoy yourself, man. And and, and every day you wake up that he gives us a new day, another shot at it, another step towards the goal, that is success. Oh, my God. That's a beautiful answer, Steve, for real. I love that. My My law. (laughs) That was great. My law. Seriously. Mm -hmm. I'm going to buy you a heating pad for Christmas, Julia. All right. (laughs) Coming up at 32 minutes after the hour, we will hear from the nephew with Run That Prank Back right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. It is time now for the nephew to run that prank back. What you got for us, Neff? We're going to be as ignorant as we was yesterday. Mm. All right. No sense in changing things up. Let's keep it stupid up in here. Uh, this is Auntie Deborah Kay's hair. All right, Auntie mm-hmm. Deborah Kay's hair. We're not going to have no problem with my auntie. You understand that? <laughs> Let's go, cat dog. This is Auntie Deborah Kay's hair. Cat dog, if you would. Hello? May I speak to This let me tell you something to you. My name is Wayne. You did my auntie's hair yesterday, and now... I don't know what you did. I don't know what kind of glue you'd use with weaves uh, or whatever, but my auntie had him fell out in church today. Well, doing- well, I don't I don't even use glue, because I don't even know why you coming at me on the side tip anyway about your auntie. My auntie is your auntie. 
My auntie is Deborah and I have fella. I don't do no Deborah. I don't do no Deborah hair. Yeah? You talking about you school? I don't do school. I've been showing that ass since I, since nineteen ninety two. You come coming at me with some glue? I don't do no glue. Hold, who you think you tripping with? Look, let me I'm tell you. Look, let me say this to you. All I'm saying is... You got to say, say what the you got to say, because I'm, I'm serious about my hair weed. You coming at me with some glue. It's too hot for some glue. That be that melted on the side of your head. Well, that's what happened, and I have fell off in service, and all the church members is sitting there laughing at her. Well, she shouldn't have been. Maybe she trying to get the devil out of her, because she ain't got no business shouting that damn hard anyway, but I don't... With no glue. You ain't finna sit here and talk about my Annie and her Jesus. Don't you talk about how she shot. Annie, I don't even know this lady. I don't Miss, even know that. The, you talking about glue? I don't do glue. They call her Miss Deborah. I don't know no Miss Deborah. She just got her hair done from you yesterday. How you gonna sit here and act like you ain't cut it yesterday? I ain't, I ain't cut the God, you just said glue. Tell Deborah to call me that. Tell her to be a real woman and call me and tell me the mistake I done made. I'm, because I don't remember no Deborah and I ain't use no glue. I'm finna tell everybody in Atlanta, Georgia not to come to your house. Wait, wait a minute, wait one minute. You wait one minute. That's my livelihood you with. Now I don't need you. Who the is this? Who are you? My name is Wayne. I don't know no Wayne. Look here, Wayne. I know you don't know Wayne, but you, you know. I'm you, I got a brother named Big J and Leroy. Bring your Wayne. Bring your Bring your swing. Look, look, let me tell you something. I don't want no problem, but I will throw these hands if I got to. What? Big J number throw them hands up. Look here, look here. I ain't got time to tell your auntie, whoever the made the mistake and wasn't me. Now look, you done got me out here on Good Sunday. I just came from church. It's hot as hell. And you telling me about some glue? You ain't got no, you ain't got to do today, do you? You I ain't got nothing to do. I got to find out why my auntie half falling out in church. Well, it ain't me, so call somebody else in Atlanta. Cause hey, I'm the I am the been the since '82. But but well, you ain't you you must not be it right now. You got people here falling out in church and glue falling all off on the pews. Don't say hey, yo, ain't it probably glued her own shit. That's probably why it fell out. Now I'm gonna tell you right now, I'm the hottest stylist in Atlanta. So I don't know who no that, but she ain't nobody. If I if hey, I ain't do a hair. I don't fuck up hair. You can call in and everybody in Atlanta. They'll tell you the same thing. Look, all I'm saying is, you done messed up my auntie hair. I want to get it rectified. I need you, first of all, to call and apologize to her. Apologize? Uh, Have you done roast show? You been drinking on some Jesus juice with your auntie. That's why her hair fell out. You and Michael Jackson and your auntie, Deborah C.C. or whatever her name is. Look, let me tell you. First of all, you go, you go respect my auntie. Okay, uh, whatever you say her name is, I... I want you to redo my ain't and half for free and give her her money back from the first time she paid you. I don't know who this, hold, hold on. I don't know who this, I, who, I don't know who you are. I'm Wayne. Why are you coming? Wayne, look here, Wayne. I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to hang up in your face. Now, hold up. I'm Deborah <laughs> nephew Wayne. Now, nah, my ain't 52 years old. Now, if you ain't going to respect your elders, how you expect to be blessed? You say you just went to church this morning. <laughs> See, that's the problem. You calling me on Sunday with some <laughs> got me cussing like this. See, now I gotta go back in and have a conference with my pastor behind some b I got one more thing I need to say to you before I get off the phone. What, what, well, say what the you gotta say, cause you wasted my minutes. This is nephew Tommy from the Steve Harvey Morning Show. You just oh. got pranked from your girlfriend. Oh, Lord. I was about to have my brothers come whoop your That <laughs> got me. <laughs> She said, trust me, going off the oh, first 12 seconds. Oh, it's she know. <laughs> <laughs> she know what it is, nephew, Tammy. Oh. Tammy. Hey, hey, baby, let me ask you. You don't do no, uh, you don't do no glue? Uh, no, I don't <laughs> no glue. I don't, I don't. Hey, hey I can tell you, I don't with no glue. It's, it's too Hot. It's too hot for glue. Too hot for the blue. <laughs> All right, baby. Ain't nobody, ain't nobody half fell out of church that you still. They say you the bomb down there, so I just wanted to call and make sure I <laughs> prank my girl. <laughs> she the one. Oh, I'm gonna <laughs> up on sight. <laughs> on sight. <laughs> All right, baby. Answer one thing for me. What is the baddest? I mean, the baddest radio show in the world. The Steve.
Harvey Morning Show. <laughs> <laughs> and there you have it. No need for pranks and praise up in here. I'll be back in an hour. We're going to do it again, but uh, there it is. Greensboro Comedy Zone is sold out for the weekend, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Appreciate y'all. I'm a, I promise you, I'm finna come give it to you. Everything I got and more. The journey to come up out of cancer, 100% cancer free, all with jokes wrapped up in it. You don't want to miss it. Land in the cut, Riley, North Carolina. That's Charlie Goodnight's Riley, North Carolina. All right? Riley, Riley, North Carolina. Carolina. Raleigh. Ooh. Ooh, Raleigh. <laughs> really? <laughs> May the doors of Raleigh open as I enter March 1st, 2nd, 3rd in the comedy club of Charlie Goodnight. Mm -hmm. It will not be the same once we leave. All right? All, All right. right. All minds clear in Raleigh, North Carolina. Thank you, Thank Shirley. you, nephew. <laughs> Coming up next, it is Ask the CLO. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Coming up at the top of the hour in entertainment news, Hoda Kotb from the Today Show says Kelly Rowland can come back and host anytime. Beyonce oh. just made musical history again. Carla's going to tell us about that in today's music news. Comedians Corey Holcomb and Donnell Rawlings are beefing. More comedians beefing. We'll talk about all of these stories at the top of the hour. But right now, it is time to ask the CLO. <clears throat> this is from Joycelyn in Broomfield. Joycelyn writes, I got saved and I've been married for four years. My husband is not saved and he loves threesomes and to go to sex parties. I'm so conflicted because some of the people at the parties are my church members. Is this normal Ooh. behavior now? <laughs> well, it is now. Yeah. We didn't know Wait. one of them was at the church. All right, now, save them. Church. You know, y'all down there. And there should be a conflict if you truly save, but you know. Now you conflicted because your husband want to continue in that lifestyle and you probably ain't going to want to. So now, what you got here? Unequally You know, yoked. you got to do what's best for you and you got to do what you think is right. That's all to that. But see, what you can't do, you can't change horses in the middle of the stream now. You you and your husband was going to sex parties and threesomes. Now you done got saved, but the people in the group is down at the church. Well, I guess they wasn't the saved members at the church, so... Was they at your saving? Was they there? <laughs> you know, you don't know if that's like a baptism or nothing, but was they at the saving? Or was they? But your husband gonna keep going down. I just want you to know. But the church members is there, though? Yeah. Yeah. A lot of people in church ain't saved. Okay. Or if and they just because you still... saved don't yeah. mean you don't sin. You don't that's, sin, that's right. the other part. Mm -hmm. I didn't know you was going to the big party. So. Okay. Yeah. All right, moving on. I'm to saved, but I'll slap you though. <laughs> Try Jesus, I, not me. I swear to God, I will. <laughs> I swear to God, I will. <laughs> like right. it ain't nothing, man. Velma like it's a part of the faith. <laughs> wow. So moving wow. on yeah. to Velma in D.C. Uh, my Hell. husband and I split up, <laughs> and I can't stand him. So I moved to a rental. I still pay half the mortgage, so I go over there whenever I want to. He had a woman in my house last night. I put her out. Why won't he agree to sell the house so he can be free? See, well, now, okay. you went to the rental. Mm -hmm. She moved out. You went to the rental because you can't stand it. Right. He had a woman in the house. Mm -hmm. You had every right to put her out because that's still your house. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. But now this, why won't he, what? Why sell won't he house. what? Sell the house. Sell the sell house. Mm -hmm. What they got so to he... do with the woman coming back over there? He just going to time it different the next time. <laughs> and See, maybe I she don't... was just in his half. <laughs> what? But I, 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 just, I just think you're arguing about the wrong thing. Why won't he sell it? Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, so he, he can wants buy to her sell it, get her money, and, and move what? on with yeah. her life. Yeah, he yeah. can do yeah, what he wants. Yeah, but they're not even divorced, right? Right. Well, they split. But she didn't say yeah. divorce. They split See, up. See, they not yeah. divorced. Now, she paying after rent, so it is still her house. Yeah. Right? She yeah. went over there and she put the woman out. Mm -hmm. Technically, yeah. it is. Mm -hmm. But she done moved into a rental. Mm -hmm. But she can't stand him. I understand that. You can't mm -hmm. stand him, but somebody can. Mm -hmm. 
Mm-hmm. And you can't get mad at this this you can't get mad at this man because he wanna have somebody. Now, he you at the house, you don't live the there no more, see. But but she's saying she's not she doesn't have a problem with that. She just yes. wants to uh-huh. sell the house. So no, they no. can move on. She got a problem with it. Why she put the lady out? She got a problem with it. Because it's her house. I, Hello. Because it's, it's still her house. She. I've said she has every right. Trust yes. me, I just said that. Mm-hmm. She got every right to put that woman out. That house. But they need yeah. to get a divorce. Yeah. They do. But you they can forget him not seeing nobody because you're over there at the rental doing something. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> at the rental. She didn't mention that. Yeah. Exactly. The rental left that you, you, you over there doing something so hard, you probably going to lose your deposit. <laughs> <laughs> Moving on to Hakeem in Myrtle Beach. All these holes in this sheetrock over here and all these ceilings that came down. And the fan ain't got but one blade on it. Ma'am, you're going to lose your security deposit. You're <laughs> doing something. <laughs> yeah. All right. Are you quite done? We're moving on. How the hell this whole sink and come out the wall? <laughs> That's why I asked. <laughs> I came in Myrtle Beach says, my wife has a very bad attitude and it's affecting our marriage. When we're out, I do all of the talking and ordering to avoid conflict. She doesn't think she has a problem. So how do I get her to see how rude and abrasive she is with others? Yeah, wow. Why don't you leave her? Oh, wow. That's it? <laughs> Well, mm. wait a minute now. Hold on. Uh huh. When the CLO say something, might I remind you that we uh-huh. will be doing a strawberry letter later on today. Uh huh. And in every last one of those letters, Shirley kills a marriage. In <laughs> every last one of them. She has no, just I do told not. every woman in every damn letter for a year and a half. <laughs> no, leave I haven't. his ass. Don't say <laughs> that. Yes, you have. Shirley, a lady true. brought it up at the Family Feud audience the other day. She, she says, Yeah, but she asked why, why you are do you what you always, do. I know because Shirley is always trying to, <laughs> you always defending the men because I am tired of Shirley. <laughs> What does this have to do with Hakeem and Myrtle Beach? Okay, what was this day situation? (laughs) (laughs) And watch, watch what I say. Go on, repeat it, Shirley. What? Okay, Hakeem says, "My, my wife has a very bad attitude, and it's affecting our marriage. When we're out, I do all of the talking and ordering to avoid conflict. She doesn't think she has a problem. So how do I get her to see how rude and abrasive she is with others? Like mm. I said, why don't you leave her? <laughs> Tired of this, now. I got to explain myself. You see, watch. Watch when we do the strawberry letter. Watch. Yes. I don't even know what the letter going to be about today, but watch Shirley tell this woman to leave this man. Watch. Watch. I'm t- okay, here's the subject. I'm too out of shape for him. So just so you'll know. That's oh! Oh, I know the name. Where are you going to tell him to leave his ass? <laughs> oh, he fat shaming? Oh, you know y'all are just that right there. Oh, Lord. So that's it to Hakeem. Bye. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> All right, we're gonna, he don't even more. know she bitter. <laughs> he knows. All right, Kashan in Knoxville says, I let my baby sister use my car and I had two scratch-offs worth $30 in the console. My sister said she cashed in the tickets so she can refill the gas in my car before bringing it back to me. She doesn't think she was wrong. Besides her never using my car again, I want my $30. How do I make her repay me? (laughs) Well, you ain't going to get the $30. Sibling, boy. (laughs) You're not going to get the $30. But I think if you don't let her use the car, that'll hurt her way more. She mm-hmm. saw them scratch off tickets. She said, hey, look, you want this car filled up? Because you was going to have to take the 30 and put some gas in there anyway. Uh-huh. See, that's, that's, that's how trite That's her logic, think. yeah. 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 So you're not <laughs> going to get leave the 30 her. back. <laughs> Yay. Leave your sister. Uh-huh. Leave, leave your her. Sister. Leave her. <laughs> leave her. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Coming up at the top of the hour. Thank you, CeeLo. We'll have some entertainment news for you right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Today's show hosts Hoda Kotb and Jenna Bush Hager have nothing but love for Kelly Rowland after Kelly uh, stepped down as co-host during the February 15th show at the last minute due to an issue with her dressing room. Take a listen to Hoda and Jenna address the issue. 
I have great love and admiration for Kelly Rowland. Mm -hmm. I adore her, and I want her to come back on our show, and I She's want her to host again. Any of course time. she is. Of course she is. She's she can best. share my dressing room. We'll be in it together. <laughs> uh, but anyway, we do. I just want to say that we love her. We've loved her on this show for many, many, many Remember years. Okay, See, that's oh, how you do it, man. Uh -huh. Watch that mess. Because yeah. Kelly Rowland is not that type of person, man. No. Nah. She's I have really love never, sweet, ever sweet, heard nothing sweet go person. off. That girl is a sweetheart. Yes. And Lord, 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 that girl that grew up. She's so fine. She's, She's beautiful. Good. She yeah. is yes. beautiful. Yes. 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 Wow. <laughs> Did you see her on the Sherry Shepard show? She was on there looking beautiful. Mm. Uh -uh. Um, uh, Sherry made sure Kelly's really. dressing room was good. And that Kelly had everything, everything she needed. She needs, right? <laughs> Hell yeah. <laughs> Yay, Kelly. Yay. I love her. All right, guys. In the other um, entertainment news, comedian Donnell Rollins wasn't feeling, you know him as Ashley Larry from the David Chappelle show. Anyway, um, he wasn't feeling Corey Holcomb's set at the Laugh Factory uh, this past weekend and decided to confront Holcomb in front of the audience. Now, this is according to TMZ. Rawlings went on stage before Corey, and once Corey got on stage, he began to talk about how Rawlings is a, quote, mild comedian and even took some shots at Dave Chappelle. Rawlings stated that he wasn't going to sit there and let Corey Holcomb talk about his close friend, Dave Chappelle. There is a viral video of parts of the argument circulating on social media. Um, Donnell said that uh, he decided to walk away from the situation, though, before things got too out of hand. He did say that he would be down with talking to Corey Holcomb in hopes of settling their differences one day. So that's a good thing. But who it took, a, uh, well, it took listen, a lot to get to that. Yeah, I've seen Donnell Rollins. Mm -hmm. That boy is funny. He said he yeah. was a beast. Mm -hmm. No, yes. Donnell Rollins is funny, it's man. Very mm -hmm. funny, yes. Corey Holcomb is funny, man. Mm -hmm. Yes. I have laughed out loud at this dude, man. Yeah. But what we got to do, man, is we, we got to look, man, we got to get back to what it was. It was comedy. That was there was no beef back, you know, Eddie wasn't on stage. He did a joke about Bill Cosby one time, but it was my have a Coke and a smile. Yeah. You understand? Uh -huh. Uh -huh. He never was no pride in Eddie and cry against Cosby and Cosby against all uh, and it just wasn't that now it's too pervasive man it's every week somebody got something to say about somebody else hey man why don't you go on stage and tell your damn jokes and that's it mm -hmm. I don't if if the other dude ain't this you got plenty you got plenty of time to show him what it's supposed to look like mm -hmm. and you telling me who ain't funny Ain't finna make you no funny earth. Blowing out my candle don't make yours brighter. Mm -hmm. And I wish we could understand that. I've had private conversation with Corey Hoker, man. I actually like the guy. I think he's one of, uh, he got a great comedic mind. But we gotta funny. get back to who we are he and what we are, man. He's funny, man. No, we comedians, man. Yeah. And comedians are supposed to do this right here. And you ain't supposed to do nothing else. But we done, we done, we done let music beats get all over into this. And now we doing it. It don't make no damn sense because the one profession that was supposed to enlighten everybody and give everybody a break. Now you go to these shows and it's and it's just a tense dog. It's just a, a, a vent fest where you venting your feelings about what somebody did to you. Tell your jokes, man. Put it yeah, in a joke form. Where's the mm. funny in that? <laughs> it's yeah. great therapy, man. You can take your pain and wrap it up in a joke. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Dude named Pierre talked about getting shot for years. Funny ass joke. Spread the he got around. shot. <laughs> mm -hmm. Bro. Wow. It's Richard Pryor did wanted. jokes about being on fire, running down yeah. the street. Yeah. You can make yeah. a joke about your pain, man. But the jokes about the other act, eh, that, that's not what this is, bro. And that's not what it is. This is yeah. a sad, sad state we live in. Mm -hmm. and, we, and we don't need to do it. But Donnell Rollins, mm -hmm. ass is funny. Yeah. Corey Holcomb, it's that funny. boy is funny. Yeah. 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 Country Ooh. Wayne, that boy is funny. <laughs> funny, yeah. <laughs> what all this beeping to stop? Yeah, yeah we need laughter right there, now man, more than killing. ever. Mm -hmm. Look, man, and Country Wayne actually proved me wrong. Because I thought 
but I didn't know the new way they would they could able to do it. I thought if you did all these bits on social media, it would kill your show when you went live because they've seen uh-huh. it all viral. Uh-huh. It made this dude have a whole career. Magnified. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yep. You know? Yeah. So it's a it's I know the couple the couple of dudes and turn them videos into careers. And wow. Country Wayne is one of them. And I love mm-hmm. that dude, man. All I, right. I love that dude. I hope they get it together. Finally, Carla is here with music news. What you got, Carla? Beyonce just made history again, y'all. Okay. (laughs) You know, another day, another history-making day, you know. According to People Magazine and Billboard, Beyonce became the first ever black female artist to top the Hot Country Songs chart Thanks to her single, Texas Hold'em. Wow. The song has about 19.2 million official streams. Mm. So, you know, Beyonce, she surprised Mm. us all on Super Bowl Sunday when she released two singles, Texas Hold'em and 16 Carriages during the Super Bowl. Mm -hmm. But B is doing... You better bow down to Queen B. That's all I know. They're going to march on this one. I have an announcement to make when we come back. Okay. You, you going into country music too? Uh-oh. You going to do an album. Hold on. Uh, hold on. <laughs> Coming up in 20 minutes. Thank you, Carla. After the hour, Donald Trump says the phrase N-word in a speech. Says it was a mistake. What? We'll talk about it right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Well, according to the Black Information Network, this past Saturday in Michigan, former President Trump delivered a speech addressing his ongoing legal battles. Trump appeared to attempt to say the word indictment before he accidentally said the phrase N-word instead. So instead of saying indictment, he said the phrase N-word. Trump said, quote, my whole life, I didn't know what the N-word. I didn't know what indictment meant. It don't mean any, uh. He was talking to the crowd about the fact that he was ordered to pay $355 million in a New York civil fraud case. Trump fixed his era as he continued to speak during the rally. Democrats believe the N-word slip-up was intentional, as Trump has been known for stirring up racial tensions with innuendo and dog whistles aimed at riling up his MAGA base. So what do you guys think? N-word, indictment... I Easy to, to mix up. Don't even start with Does anybody language. have a copy of the tape? I want to hear it. Yeah. Well, then he didn't I say that in words. He's a, he's a great actor. Phrase you know? in words. So I just want you to know that, too. Oh, oh, you mean he, he said actually the in word. In word. He said the no, phrase. No, that's what I'm yeah. asking you. Yes. yes. He said in word. So read exactly what he said then. My that's whole life, I didn't know what the in word, I didn't know what indictment meant. That's his quote. That's exactly. But indictment don't, don't start care. with an end. But, yeah, I, <laughs> but I care. We need you to care right now. No, I mean, because, I mean, it's Donald Trump. Yeah. yeah. Why do you keep expecting decency mm-hmm. and, and respect? Point. And why do you mm-hmm. expect, why would mm-hmm. we expect him to act like like a, 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 decent, a, human a decent human being? <laughs> He's not. He's a former person. president of the United mm-hmm. States. Yes. He yeah. is constantly doing things like this. Constantly saying stuff right here. This ain't nothing new. He done mm-hmm. said the N word before, too. I <laughs> promise you he has. <laughs> Not sure. just the phrase N word, oh. the actual word. Okay. How do you get N word and indictment mixed up, though? How? Don't start with the same letters. <laughs> Right. He knows, he knows what he's doing. Yeah. Hell, body. Yeah. Come on, y'all. <laughs> y'all better register the boat and get out of the boat. I'm trying to tell you. And quit playing around with this thing. Man. I know you sick of voting, but man, if you going you think you sick now. He has done nothing for the black community. Now while all y'all hosts and all y'all black uh political voices in here talking about what Kamala Harris ain't done and stuff. She the vice president. Mm. What vice president has ever done any damn thing? They can't. This okay. is Joe Biden's work. Y'all yeah. come on, man. Y'all Get registered. Go vote. Coming up at 34 minutes after the hour, it is Black History Month, of course, and we'll spotlight the godfather of soul, James Brown, right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. 
We all know it's Black History Month, and there is a documentary on A&E called James Brown, Say It Loud. The special reflects on the Godfather of Soul as a musical force and cultural catalyst in uh, never-before-seen interviews and footage from Reverend Al Sharpton and musical greats like Bootsy Collins. There is also a part of the documentary that suggests there is there was a time when James Brown was arguably the most powerful black man in America. He virtually invented the ferocious blend of jazz and gospel that became known as funk. His Live at the Apollo album expanded the horizons of the recording industry and his songs became a soundtrack for the civil rights movement. Steve, got to ask you this. You knew him. You met the man before. What can you say about James Brown's music and the influence that it had on music and culture today? I mean, look, he was the first dude to rap. Mm. He, he, he invented funk. Hmm. Yeah. He was the first real dancer on stage. Woo. Chris Brown, Michael Jackson, Usher, all Usher, them yes. copy his move. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. Now, they've elevated it, but they copied what he did. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Michael Jackson admitted it. Mm -hmm. I, Michael Jackson came to, it was a BET Awards, I believe, and they were honoring James Brown. Michael called uh -huh. with Ramon Baines on the phone and mm -hmm. said to Steve there. I'll come if Steve is there. Michael Jackson came backstage looking for me. He said, hey, man, I want to do something special for James. This is a Black History moment. Mm -hmm. I said, you know what you ought to do? When James Brown being open, they put the cape on him. You ought to take the cape out there. So I called the guy over. James was on stage. What? They gave the cape to Michael. Michael Jackson went out there and put the cape on James Brown. Yeah, yeah I remember that. Yes, and we remember my, that. And, yeah. and, 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 and when James Brown, I got the picture of the night. <laughs> Me and Mike was backstage. I got Come that on, picture. Come on, Black History moment. Come I'm on, Black History. This dude was right. And when he stood up, James hugged him. But he did a James Brown move. He gave all his credit to his dance moves to James Brown. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. James Brown was that dude. Doesn't I'll tell you how kind he was. I saw him in Augusta, Georgia one night at a Sheraton Hotel. I said, man, my mom and daddy love you. I said, man, can I call him and you talk to him? Give him a phone. <laughs> <laughs> Do what? <laughs> Give him a phone. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like Roscoe. He got a little bit of James something. Brown in him. <laughs> My mama answered the phone. I said, Mama, how you doing? Hey, Steve, where you at, baby? I said, I'm in Gusset, I said, Mama, I got a surprise for you. I said, where, where Daddy at? Put Daddy on the phone. Hey, boy. I said, Daddy, somebody want to talk to you. He said, Little Hop. <laughs> he said, yeah, Who is it? The James Brown, sir. <laughs> Get the blank out of here. <laughs> that was your dad. That's what my daddy said. <laughs> no, Mr. Harvey, it's me and Jay Brown. <laughs> <laughs> Boy, my father could not believe that, man. Classic, right? My daddy Trump said, classic. hell no. <laughs> <laughs> you playing the blank Godfather so <laughs> Mr. Harvey, I'm going to tell you, think of your son, you and some family, friend, or all you. Just wonderful. Appreciate the one thing being a friend of mine. <laughs> my daddy cussed. James Brown hung up. I called my daddy back. He said, Boy, your black ass done made it. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't make it to that moment. Hell, you know James Brown. I said, Daddy, he was in the restaurant and I saw him because I had done a couple shows with him out in LA. Uh -huh. And uh, I was just performing that night and he was, in, he was just in the restaurant eating, man. Mm. Wow. Yeah, that's, phone that's, talk that's to my daddy. He was just that dude. And when it came to civil rights, he went up there. He he, he was calming them cats down mm -hmm. during the riot. Mm -hmm. He made movements for them. Mm -hmm. that, he was a special dude, man. Mm -hmm. He had his problems later on, but who ain't? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. Who ain't? Yeah. It's just, yeah. just, but, but that's, they cared, you know, they got involved. Him, Jim Brown, Bill Russell, Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, Muhammad Ali. They all stood together, man, to make mm -hmm. change. Arthur Ashe. Mm -hmm. All them cats stood to fight for rights for black people. Yeah. Wow. Now we yeah. on social media just tearing each other down. <laughs> but thank you for that black hey. history moment, Steve. Thank that you for that. that uh, coming up next. <laughs> it is the nephew and today's prank phone call right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. 
Coming up at the top of the hour, right about four minutes after, it's my strawberry letter for today. And the subject is, I'm too out of shape for him. Hmm. We'll get into that, find out what that's all about in just a few. Get it together then. <laughs> because right Quiet. now, it is time for the nephew and today's prank phone call. What you got for us, Neff? I'm not out of shape. Over here, we're doing mobile baptismal pool. Mobile baptismal pool. Mm. We come we come by the house. You come outside. You get on the back of this truck. We're going to baptize you right here and get you washed in the blood of the lamb right here. You understand that? Mm-hmm. Wash in the blood of the lamb. Mobile baptismal pool. Cat dog, if you would. Hello? Hello, I'm trying to reach a Mr. Wilson. It's Wilson. Well, how you doing? Who's this? Uh, how you doing? Uh, my name is Brother Springwater, man. Listen, we, uh, we, we, we got uh, paid to actually come by and do some services to, uh, for, for you by some friends of yours, and we wanted to actually call and see about scheduling and see what you had available. Uh, some, some, some of my services. What, y'all plan on cutting some grass? What, uh, what y'all do? What kind of services y'all have? Actually, sir, uh, you've got some friends that have actually spent a, a great amount of money on you, and what we do is um, we have a um, baptismal on wheels service. And what we do is we go and we um, we baptize people uh, at their home. And and Baptism on Wheels has been it's a new um, company, but we we've, we've baptized over a thousand people now. We have a a truck with, which actually has a baptismal pool on the back of it, and we actually come to your home and we will baptize you in your driveway and and make you whole again. So we uh, uh, bro, bro, excuse me, bro, brother Water. Brother Spring, what, what's your name again? I'm sorry. I didn't, Spring I didn't, Water. Spring Water. Spring Water, you want to come to my house and give me a baptism in my front yard? We want to baptize you right there in your driveway. Your friends are paid for the services. And My, uh, my friend, what friend will pay for me to get baptized? I, man, I've been baptized already, Doc. Well, from my understanding, baptized. sir, that evidently you, you had some some bumps and bruises, and, and, and they seem to uh, to believe that you need to be washed and cleaned I mean, again. I mean, that's all good. That's all That's, that's, all, that's all good. But, I mean, things are, I mean, thing, be that uh, that it may, man. I mean, I, I've been baptized. I go to church. You know, uh, uh, me and the Lord don't have no problems. I mean, we all have setbacks. But for you to pull up with your pool in front of my house to say you finna baptize me, that, that doesn't make any sense to me, Doc. I mean. Well, see, see the, sir, sometimes when some people are not able to go to the house of the Lord and get baptized, you know, we're making it a lot more convenient for you. But we can I actually don't need come... no convenience. I don't need no convenience. What I need convenience for? You asking me to come to my house on a Tuesday to baptize me in my driveway, does that make any sense to you, Brother Water? I mean, come on. If you really sit back and think about it, does that make any sense to you uh, uh, to come for the convenience? First of all, sir, that 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 that's Brother Spring Water. But what I'm Brother, trying to what I'm trying to any say any type is that, of water it is holy water, spring water. It doesn't make no difference to me. You can't come to my neighborhood and baptize me in front of my house, sir. sir what is all the anger? Cool water. See, this is this is what your friends are talking about. That I don't give a damn what my friends are telling you, man. And anybody, which which one of my friends gonna recommend you to come to my damn house? Sir, I'm I'm I'm, I'm not. Me I'm, and my and my and my. I'm, Dude, that, man, that don't even make any sense to me. You understand? Sir, I'm not, I'm not at any liberty to tell you who actually... Uh, hey, hold up, but you're in the liberty to come to my damn house and baptize me, but you can't tell me who the hell going to send you. But you're not at liberty. What type, man, come on. You don't even... Come on. Does that make sense to you, Doc? Come on. That doesn't make any... No way in the world I'm going to allow you to come and bring your pool in front of my house and baptize me. Then I'm asking you as... as you, you're supposed to be a pastor... You're supposed to be baptized. I'm asking you, okay, which friend of mine is telling you to, you know, to let you know I need to be baptized. You're going to take you out of liberty? Sir, sir, all I want to know, uh, basically, you, I've already been paid. I'm, I'm coming, I'm, I'm calling you asking take it you to a your schedule. You're not on... baptizing me. I've been baptized. I'm going to baptize you on Tuesday in your driveway. Man, I'll tell you what. If you come to my house in front of my driveway, you better bring the whole congregation. You understand? You better bring the deacons, the brothers. The sisters and everybody else, if you think I'm going to be baptized, my this you is the problem. Me? This is because what your no, friends are talking about. This is why you need to be baptized and cleansed again and washed in the blood of the Lamb. This is what's wrong. You need to be cleansed. That's what's wrong with you, Mr. Wilton. What?
what's wrong with me? No, what's wrong with you is calling me in the middle of my work day telling me I need to be baptized in front of my house. If I need to be baptized and go get some holy water, I go down to the church. I don't need you coming in front of my house making a whole circus with all your friends and some white sheep talking about you want to baptize me. From my, understand, from, my understanding, from my understanding, from my understanding, Mr. Wilton, you've missed two Sundays already this month. Sundays, so, man, I can go anywhere and get the word. I don't need you coming here because you tell me I missed two damn Sundays. I'm gonna miss this Sunday too because the football game coming on. Sir, all I know is I've been paid to do a job. I will be there Tuesday morning at seven o'clock, and we will baptize you before you go to I, work on Tuesday. I tell morning. you what. I tell you what. You come to my house seven o'clock in the morning. I swear on your Lord, I'm going to bust your ass. You understand me? You will not come to my house telling me you're going to baptize. I don't give a damn who paid you. You understand? I will drown your ass in the water. Matter of fact, now, bring you, your deacons, and everybody else, we're going to have a pool party in that you understand? I'm going to I'm 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 get all, all of this anger and all of this, this, these problems you have within you. We are going to purge your body and get it out your system. I don't want your Please, let me, I tell you what, I tell you what, Brother Springwater, is it that's the call? It's no. Brother Bring Springwater. You gonna get baptized on Tuesday morning. I don't give a damn who pays you, who calls you. Bring your ass, I'm gonna you up. I guarantee you, I'm gonna dry you on sight. I got one more thing I want to say to you. Is you listen you to me? Got a matter of fact, I'm busy. You ain't got to say to me. I gotta go, you understand? You ain't got I got one more me. thing I want to say to you. Is you listening to me? What, man? This is Nephew Tommy from the Steve Harvey Morning Show. You just got pranked by your boy, Mason. <laughs> Hello? Man, let me tell y'all something, man. <laughs> boy, <laughs> let me tell you something, boy. Y'all, y'all was about to bring some head up to heaven. I was about to act a fool on y'all if y'all would have showed up at my crib. You understand me? <laughs> boy, Tommy, y'all ain't got shit better to do. <laughs> Than to sit around here and just f- with people <laughs> doing their day. Man, I ain't never thought y'all could get me with this. Hey, who the hell goes around <laughs> baptizing people on wheels? That's like meals on wheels. <laughs> How y'all baptize people with a pool on the back of your, your F-150? Hey, Wilson, you know? I got to ask you something. What is the baddest radio show in the land? Man, you know it's the Steve Harvey Morning Show. <laughs> <laughs> there you have it. Y'all, y'all want me to baptize y'all? Y'all, y'all want to, y'all want to, you know, I come by the house, get it done right out there in the front yard. Y'all want it? Just when I think you can't get any more stupid. No, we're no. good. Thank you, though. <laughs> you surprised me. Carla, don't reject my services. Uh, I've been baptized. I'm good. I'm right. Sometimes driving people up to need the it. Some, sometimes you need it again. Sometimes you, you didn't get clean. You the too. Time. You too. Yes. <laughs> yes. Uh-huh. Greensboro, you already know what time it is. Riley, North Carolina, you're laying in the cut. I'm going to bring my baptismal pool to Riley, North Carolina, and just baptize people before the show. Yeah. <laughs> Clean before the show. You get a nice comedy show and get washed. You can't beat that. In <laughs> the blood of the lamb. All right? All minds clear? <laughs> clear. All right. And I will be giving you all of that. In Raleigh, North Carolina, next weekend. Got some tickets on sale right now. <laughs> my daddy, my dad used to carry them all. Ah, if you turn to the book of Ara, 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 Malachi, will a man rob God? Yet ye have robbed me. Where in tithe and in offering? <laughs> Bring all your tithe into the storehouse. You know, you know how it goes. Yeah. All right, nephew. Thank you. Coming up next, strawberry you, letter for, t- for today. The subject is, I'm too out of shape for him. Hmm, we'll get into that. Find out what that's all about right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. It is time now for today's Strawberry Letter. And if you need advice on relationships, dating, work, sex, parenting, and more, please submit your Strawberry Letter to steveharveyfm.com and click Submit Strawberry Letter. We could be reading your letter live on the air, just like we're going to read this one right here, right now. And you never know, it could be yours. It could be yours. Buckle up and hold on tight. We got it for you. Here it is. Strawberry Letter. 
Thank you, nephew. Subject, I'm too out of shape for him. Dear Stephen Shirley, I'm a 48-year-old divorced female and I'm trying online dating. My niece helped me do my dating profile and we used a real photo of me, but she suggested that I lie about my interests so I would attract a man with a nice body. So I said that I love working out, running, and traveling. The app matched me with a tall, muscular, older man. He isn't cute, but we've been dating for six weeks, getting to really know each other, and I like him a lot. He runs marathons, and he asked me to do a charity run with him in April. I said yes, but I didn't know how because I didn't know how to say no. Uh, we started working out together, and it was obvious that I didn't know what to do in the gym. I told him that I do yoga now instead of going to the gym. Another lie. We worked out so hard that my head hurt. Then we went to my house and he told me that we were getting in the shower together. He looked at me in the eye and said he wanted me. And he'd been waiting for this moment. My head was hurting and I was so nervous because I look a lot better in my clothes than I do naked. The shower was uncomfortable and it felt like he realized I didn't work out by the way he looked at my body. After the shower, you already know, we went straight to my bed. It was our first time together, and I had such a hard time keeping up with him. My leg was not supposed to bend the way he bent it, and it's still hurting. (laughs) Stephen Shirley, I have lied and ended up with a man that is too good to be true. I'm too out of shape for him. I can't have sex with him again. I'm too afraid. How do I fix my lies but keep this man? What are you so afraid of? I mean, working out will make you more flexible. But wait a minute uh, before you do anything, anything else, you have to learn how to say no. If you're uncomfortable, if you don't want to do something, you can say no. You can say I'm not ready. You can say I need more time. All of that is okay. The second thing you need to do is get your confidence up. Okay, that's what's sexy to a man. Men are visual. You're obviously not as bad as you think because he's seen you naked in the shower and in the bedroom and he wasn't complaining you just weren't comfortable with how you looked I I think women in general are much too hard on uh, ourselves and uh, you you have to start feeling good about you and you have to start doing that now you can't expect anyone else to if you don't men pick up on those signals you can still work out you can still do things with him you just have to go at your own pace you can't try to keep up with him if it's too much Uh, You're doing this for you, remember, not him. The third thing I have to say to you is that um, people do this all the time. Everyone lies or stretches the truth on these dating sites. Uh, So (laughs) some even go as far as catfishing. I'm sure you've seen the show Catfishing. You haven't done any of that, and he's still there. So again, don't be so hard on yourself. Anyway, didn't you say he wasn't cute? You said he wasn't cute. So he's probably glad to have a woman like you. Be confident. Steve? Once again, we done read two different letters. <laughs> yeah, here I go. I just want to say before I do this letter, forgive me for those of you that might uh, be slightly uh, put off. Uh-oh. Or what shall they say, put aback. Taken aback. By what I may say in my response. Mm-hmm. But in the words of Lil John, here I go. (laughs) So here we go. Uh, Dear Stephen Shirley, I'm a 48-year-old divorced female, and I'm trying online dating. Very good. 65% of most marriages today come from online dating. That's a new stat that's out. My niece helped me do my dating profile. We used a real photo of me. Thank you. Thank you. But she suggested I lie about my interest so I would attract a man with a nice body. Now, let's start right here. If you're going to attract a man with a nice body, the man with the nice body probably didn't got his body like that because he want to attract a woman with a nice body. Let's just go there. A man is in the gym to be fit because he like to be fit. He probably going to look for somebody fit. That's why your niece told you to lie and tell him your interest is that so you can find a nice fit man. Well, you got to be fit too. That's the key. You looking for fit? He looking for fit. 
But now, so I said that I love working out, running, and traveling. God, dog. <laughs> Did you write running in there? Who like running? <laughs> Not too many Runners. people. So already now, see, and then Shirley said what she, uh, Shirley just be lying to y'all. What? Shirley said you should always tell the truth. Then she said everybody lie. On those Didn't dating sites, that, they stretch it. Mm-hmm. Well, but see now, if you go lie, you gonna have to work on your lying. <laughs> Cause y'all up in here telling lies, you can't got no back. I love working out and running. Big ass ain't ran nowhere. Ain't even been to the gym. She said, yeah, she "Let me ask. Shape. Let me just tell you something. I'm not saying this is the case with this lady, but if you chubby, if you're chubby, you you probably don't run, and you shouldn't." Because it's bad on your joints. You're going to mess your whole right, hip hang up. on. Junior. <laughs> hang on. We'll have part two of your response, Steve, coming up. She did not stay chubby. She said out of shape. I stopped. I stopped. <laughs> coming up at 23 minutes after the hour, we'll get back into the letter. It's called, uh, I'm too out of shape for him. <laughs> we'll hear part two of Steve's response right after this. Damn, boy. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. All right, come on, Steve. Let's recap today's strawberry letter. The subject, I'm too out of shape for him. Well, you said it in your letter. So now why I got to watch what I say. You're 48 years old. You're divorced. Ain't nothing wrong with that. Your niece helped you get a dating profile. Use a real photo of yourself. That was shoulders up. Shoulders up. Real photo. Shoulders up. Headshot. What you did. What you did. Then she suggested that you lie about your interest so that you would attract, so you'd attract a man with a nice body. So I said, I love working out, running, and traveling. <laughs> really? <laughs> okay, now, work on your lying. Work on your lying. <laughs> the app matched me with a tall, muscular, older man. He Ooh. isn't cute. Oh, don't try to low rate him now. See, you're trying to make us think something wrong with him. But you got just what you asked for. Muscular, he in shape because he in that gym. Matched you up because you said you love to work out and run. He isn't cute, but we've been dating for six weeks. Now, obviously, you can stomach him. And he can stomach him. <laughs> he might not be cute, but he ain't he, he, he flat out ugly, though. <laughs> Why are you mad, though? No, because she lied. That. No, I no, nah, I'm getting that. Man, we've been dating for six weeks and getting really to know each other. And I like him a lot. It's because he got personality. He runs marathons, and he asked me to do a charity run with him in April. I said yes because I don't know how to say no. Now hold up, now you finna go run. <laughs> See this dating app right here for a minute. I thought this was Tommy because we got Tommy love to work out. He stay in shape, and Tommy run a lot. Uh-huh. And Tommy in good ass shape too, so I thought this was Tommy right here, but Tommy. Ain't you did. Be <laughs> well, you know they said he was tall, and I said okay. But they said he was. <laughs> but she, but she said he was unattractive. Now, right yeah, there, really, right there. Now you he said he wasn't why cute. I thought it was you. <laughs> no. Yeah. Because I'm right there with you on that. I've been trying to tell you for a while, but anyway, it ain't Tommy. I said yes because no. I don't know how to say no. We started working out together, and it was obvious I don't know what to do in the gym. I told him I do yoga now instead of going to the gym. Another lie. Yes. Help See, listen to me. You got to work on your lying. <laughs> you got to do something. You got to do like, you got to say like you into ribbon dancing. You got to do stuff people can't ribbon check on. <laughs> yeah, you got to do stuff like that. <laughs> you know, you play pickleball, stuff like that. You got to say stuff that, you know, other black people don't do. Mm. Sitting up in here lying, talking about you in the gym and you run. Another lie. We worked out so hard, my head hurt. <laughs> then we went to my house, and he told me we was getting in the shower together. He looked at me in my eyes and said he wanted me, and yes. he'd been waiting for this moment. Yeah. My head was hurting, and I was so nervous because I look a lot better in my clothes than I do naked. That's 98% of the people in the world, lady. Yeah. Don't worry about that. Everybody look better in clothes. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so I was nervous because I look a lot better in my clothes than I do naked. The shower was uncomfortable. Now nah, let's get back to this weight now. The shower was uncomfortable. That's because it was crowded in there. <laughs> you got your little chubby ass up in there, and that shower got crowded. 
big muscle, ugly ass dude in that big muscle with them tight face. He up in there just in that strong, all them muscles. He flexing your little chubby ass in there, and now you uncomfortable in the shower because it's crowded in there. Too much weight. Y'all all up against the glass and tow the damn curtain down there. Y'all got water all over the toilet seat. Where is that in the letter? It's in there, Shirley. Paint the picture. Go ahead. And I felt like he realized I didn't work out by the way he looked at my body because he was looking around it. <laughs> around it. <laughs> he couldn't find the knob in there. He was trying to get the water really? a little hotter, but he couldn't reach the knob because you was all in the knob, the nozzle, and the window. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All up in here. Chubby asked and told him, you like running. You know you ain't ran no damn well. You run up them steps or you'll fall out. Anyway, anyway, after the shower, you already know we went straight to my bed. You had to hurry up and get under them sheets. <gasps> we went straight to my bed. It was our first time together, and I had such a hard time keeping up with him. Because he in the gym, he in shape. And I'm going to tell you something about ugly men, too. We <laughs> got right. to be able to bring it, because we might not get a second chance. <laughs> <laughs> so you couldn't even hardly keep up with him. Did you say we? My leg was yeah, not supposed to be in that way he bent it, and it's still hurt. It's supposed to go back there. <laughs> oh, he didn't do nothing he ain't seen before. He had your ankle in his hand, and it was back there by the other girl ear. Yours don't go back there. Shirley, come talking about you need to get more flexible. You ain't going to get flexible by the next date. That's for damn sure. <laughs> uh, They've been dating for gonna six weeks. Going to mess around and tear a whole hamstring out trying to keep up with this fool in his bed. <laughs> this is over with. This relationship is done. Oh, oh it's not. Oh. Good you fought in, you and your old ass husband wasn't doing none of that. I have lied and ended up with a man that's too good to be true. I'm too out of He's shape not. for him. I can't have sex with him again. That's right. And I'm too afraid. Yes, you should he be. How do I fix my lies? I'm keeping this man. He gone. He is he not gone. gone. He gone, Shirley. <laughs> They've been saw dating you for a while. You lie and your leg don't go back there. What we in here doing now? <laughs> you ain't flexible. You're chubby. You ain't flexible. At least be flexible. Post your comments on today's Strawberry Letter at Steve Harvey FM. And check out the Strawberry Letter podcast on the free iHeartRadio app. It never sounded so good, so you should download it today. Coming up in 46 minutes after the hour, Junior is here with Sports Talk right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. It is time now for Junior and Sports Talk. What you got, Junior? Well, you know, Robert Reed passed away, man. Houston Rockets yeah. legend Robert Reed oh, passed away. Wow. Oh, I've been yeah. here. Yeah, 68 years old, man. He played 10 years with the Houston Rockets. 68? You know? Yeah, he passed yeah, away 68. 68. Yeah. Uh, Please when continue, you, Junior. Yeah, did you see Robert Reed play? Um, well, well, I was a kid when Robert Reed was playing in the NBA. Yeah, yeah. Robert, oh, Robert Reed, play. we the same age. What you talking about? <laughs> I'm saying, like, you know, like, uh, what, what was he like? Ten years, he played with Moses Malone. Yeah, he's, he's a great player. You know, he, 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 he was a role player. He was a role yeah. player. He's a role player. Yeah. He was a good brother. Okay. All right, man. Well, you know, uh, and then also, man, it's Black History Month, Uncle. I just, I want to ask you about this, too. Ali... Bill Russell, Jim Brown, he's like I said, Arthur Ashe, Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. What was they like for the movement for the civil rights? What I mean, they, they stood were? up. They were the most recognizable figures in the world today. You know, they were mm -hmm. athletes. And they weren't high-paid athletes. They were making good money, but nothing like they make today. Mm -hmm. But they united themselves and stood up for the cause for the rights of black people. Them dudes right there made stance, man. Kareem Abdul-Jabbar yeah. changed his name from Lou Alcindor. Mm -hmm. Cassius Clay changed his name to Muhammad Ali. That Jim Brown man was dating white women on screen. Oh, man. And talking Damn, back to folks. <laughs> so Bill Russell was winning championships, coaching, and, 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 and taking leadership roles. These men stood up. Arthur Ashe made them change the game of tennis. They, oh, wow. they made them. These people, man... Althea Gibson, they was legends, man. That was just different. And there's some cats out there today that's very active. And you look at LeBron James and his Ooh, yes. activity yeah. out there, man. Yeah. There's some LeBron. cats out there, man, that's about the business. LeBron James is in the community, building schools, yes. building stuff, you know. The yeah. Jordan Foundation right now is doing outstanding work. Everybody was mad at Jordan in the beginning. But Jordan was born to change the game of basketball. Right. Jordan was not born into this other role like uh, like LeBron was. Look, 
LeBron, Jordan was born to take the game of basketball globally. You go look in Turkey or anywhere in the Middle East, that boy is on that wall with that ball in his hand jumping through the air. He Then he became more active, civil rights and stuff like that, jobs and stuff like that. Jordan bad dude. Yeah. Yeah, man. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, I didn't know all that. He did all of that. I didn't know Arthur Ashe changed tennis like that. <laughs> That's what he had to do. Yeah, and, just being black in it and winning. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. Yeah, Serena and Venus came yes. and did a whole nother notch to that thing. Yes. Yes. What? <laughs> yeah. What? All right, another black history moment. That what? was a sports moment there. Thank you, Junior. Thank you, Steve. Coming up at the top of the hour, Steve, a woman on social media needs your advice. She says, my brother started a fight with my boyfriend. Uh-oh, we'll talk about that right and after I'm going to make this. that special announcement that I have tomorrow. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. So, Steve, Carrie on Facebook says... Hold on I one just... second. Before you go, I have a special Black History Month announcement. Oh, okay. Oh, go wow. Ahead. Okay, you know, we okay. Can do what it is it? First. I just want you to know that next week I'll be releasing my very first hip-hop gangster rap album. Mm -hmm. What? <laughs> What's your name? Why? What is your name? <laughs> Steve Harvey. <laughs> <laughs> you been in the studio? <laughs> yeah. I'm releasing my very first hip-hop gangster rap album. Any collabs we can expect? No, no, I don't want nobody. Ain't nobody qualified. Just you. <laughs> They're not. Nobody's all qualified. All you. This is all me right no. here. All me. All um, you. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'll, I'll pick it up. Okay. Well, can't wait. Can't wait to hear. Trying to do some Beyonce historical <laughs> stuff. <laughs> what are you doing? Well, I'm using three people on the album. They collab, but I didn't get okay, this. Oh, oh, okay, you are. Oh, okay. Who you got? Oh, okay. Definitely. <laughs> they ain't really Moving. nothing they can do about it, so... <laughs> you didn't have to check with anyone crazy. No, nah, I'm gonna just, it right. ain't gonna be out long. So, as soon as it come out, get it, because they're gonna take it down. <laughs> I already know a cease and desist is coming. Go ahead, show me. <laughs> All right, well, is that your real announcement? <laughs> that was it. <laughs> well, thank just you. Just want like to throw something saying. out there, that's all. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, Carrie on Facebook says, I took my boyfriend to my family's house for dinner over the weekend, and he'd met them all before, but it was the first time we'd been together at one time. Uh, out of the blue, my brother, who's closest to my age, starts an argument with my boyfriend, saying that he had something, he had said something offensive, which he didn't. Before I even realized what was happening, they were fighting and wrestling on the floor. My boyfriend is a lot bigger than my brother, so he quickly got the better of him. But then my dad and my other brother jumped in to pull them apart. My oh, other no. brother puts my boyfriend in a headlock, which leads them to getting in a fight. Everything settles down and we leave. But when I talk to my family later, somehow the whole thing is now my boyfriend's fault. He didn't start any of this. And now I don't feel comfortable bringing him around to my family's house. I feel like my family is ganging up on him and he doesn't deserve it. What should I do? Well, first of all, you think you don't feel comfortable bringing him around there. I bet his ass puckers up <laughs> real nice if you need to go back over there. I'll tell you that for damn sure. You think you uncomfortable. He, don't, he ain't going back over there. And there's nothing you can do about it. Mm -hmm. And they don't, they done sided up with your brother. I don't know oh, what he could have said to your boyfriend to make this fight start. I don't know. But it would have been in your boyfriend's best interest to go, hey, man, my bad. I, that, that ain't what I meant. But if I said something you thought was offensive, I apologize. You mm -hmm. you fighting this cat over their house? Now, the daddy and the other brother jumped in. It, it's wall now. Yeah. And this ain't no reality show. This is why you can't have men on reality shows. He can't go over there Friday right. and they just be eating. So they see his ass. They, they can't just be immediately <laughs> cool again. No. 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 no this ain't, they can't this ain't go on the trips together. Wide. No, ain't none of that. No. <laughs> oh, wow. wow. Okay. So that's it for that, huh? Yeah, there ain't no more. Ain't no more. Mm. So it she right. needs to break Everybody up with him. It's over, too. <laughs> yeah, you can go on counsel him. You think good really? fighting, though. Yeah, he's whooping everybody in your family. That's the other reason he can't go back over. <laughs> <laughs> he can fight. <laughs> All right. Uh, I, we do have time for another one. This is from Shelly on Steve Harvey FM. Shelly says, I started dating this guy a few weeks ago, and we really hit it off. We're both in our mid-20s. 
and he told me he was in a serious relationship for several years that ended last year. Last night was our fourth date, and he revealed that he has a two-year-old son. He says that he didn't tell me right away because he didn't want to scare me off, but that uh, he would he would understand if I didn't want to see him anymore. Is it excusable that he withheld that information from me until now? Should I see this as a sign that this relationship is a bad idea? Uh, you only went, you went on four dates. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that wasn't that long. He finally told you he had a son. You didn't find out. He opened up and told you. Right. And he mm-hmm. told you why and he, he did it. scare her off. That's why he didn't. What you it wasn't for. four years. Mm-hmm. <laughs> four yeah, dates. Four dates. <laughs> okay. okay. All so right. They can stay together. <laughs> they can... All right. <laughs> More yeah. of the Steve Harvey Morning Show coming up at 20 minutes after, right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Well, Apple wants you to stop dropping your phone in water and putting it in rice. Didn't you say you just did that recently, Steve, right? I just did that. Drop yeah. that whole phone in that bathtub. Everybody mm-hmm. did that. What, what but, but, but Apple is now saying if you put your phone in rice, it could allow small particles of the rice to damage your iPhone. So if your iPhone gets wet... A new feature sends an alert warning that your phone is wet and you should wait to charge it. Apple recommends gently tapping your iPhone against your hand to knock out excess water. Uh, Then make sure that your connector is facing down. After that, leave your iPhone in a dry area with airflow. Wait half an hour and then repeat the process. Why don't you get that new phone that you can drop in the water? Oh. Everybody can't afford a new phone. <laughs> what? I can the afford rice a bag of rice. for me back when I did that <laughs> the rice before. works. Yeah. So you still with the with the rice. So you uh, everybody's done the rice trick? Oh, yeah. Yep. Yeah. yeah. Who hasn't? Mm-hmm. I ruined mm-hmm. the phone one time after I dropped it in the water. I didn't know the rice trick. I, I held it over open flame. You, trying to, to dry try it? to dry it? What? <laughs> Would it do yeah. the phone melt? It's going to burn the damn All the inside melted. <laughs> That was the last time I saw anything on that screen. <laughs> you burned the phone. Yeah. I just took it. <laughs> yeah. Looked it up online later. On. Yeah. All right. Uh, <laughs> coming up in 33 minutes after the hour, we'll play a round of Would You Rather right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. It is time now for a round of Would You Rather. Would you rather one nostril or one ear? Whoa! Or well, I'm only just have, have one ear. You can't have that half nostril on your face talking to me. Because <laughs> <laughs> there's no way I'm not going to be able to tell this. Joke. You can't even fuck it. Yeah. I, I got to sure, sure have both my sure hope you don't gotta, sneeze. <laughs> I got to have both my ears. I got I got to be sit my glasses on something. But yeah, I'm, I'm going to have one nostril. Ooh. Oh, I don't give a damn your uncle. glasses are sitting on my head, cockeyed. <laughs> just at an angle. I'm not going to handle one damn nostril. I'm telling you that right now. <laughs> Leave that face alone. <laughs> yeah. well, you got one nostril where you going to put your glasses anyway. <laughs> you still got your nose. It's some I got my nose. But you always pull your glasses down on your nose, don't you? During that day, you do something. That's yeah. over with. <laughs> pull them down All right. and your tooth. Would you rather wear a clown wig or a clown shoes every day? Clown wig or clown shoes every day? Well, if Tommy wear my shoes, that's what they're going to look like. <laughs> hey, hey. Hey. Roll. Yeah, yeah, he ain't on the road. Yeah. He's on the road, Tommy. I'm going to go with the shoes. I told you. That's what he said. <laughs> he used to put my shoes on all the time when he was little. He's still little. He put them on now and do the same thing. Shut up. Grown man. Not much has changed. Hell no. All right. Would you rather be stuck with your spouse in a tree house or a tent on a stormy day? Both of them is with the spouse? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Treehouse or a tent? It's the same storm. damn thing. It's the same damn thing. Both of them in a storm? Uh, no, no, no. Just a treehouse. Yeah, it's a storm with rainy your spouse day. or a tent with your spouse on a rainy day, stormy day. Uh, uh, 
Well, you get up in it. It's lightning and can on. Uh, yeah, it's storming. Yes. Stormy. Uh, uh, yeah, you in and you're in there with your spouse in a tent. I don't know why we up in this tree, though. That's, that's yeah. too much. Well, you You're lightning. Me. <laughs> <laughs> why is you scared to be in a tree? You can't blow nothing time? over in that tree. Mm. Yeah, but it's the tree in the tree house. You're, it's not storming. <laughs> I'm, well, Tommy, you know, well, you didn't explain else. it. You didn't explain it to the best. Oh, oh now it's that's for sure. Junior, junior what? <laughs> but we know you I don't was like just saying, I don't know why junior. Tommy. I don't know why Tommy act like he can't get in the tree house. The Keebler elves live there. You know that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, them your people. Oh, look who's back. Look who's back. Oh, them your yeah, people. Look <laughs> yeah, that's better. You act like you ain't never been in the tree house before. <laughs> Feeling on, a little man. better this morning. <laughs> Coming up. That's Take today's round through. of Would You Rather. <laughs> <laughs> Coming up in 49 minutes after, it's the last break of the day, and we'll close out the show with the one and only Steve Harvey right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. All right, guys, here we are, last break of the day on this Thursday. And, uh, Junior, yeah, at the beginning I, of the show, you asked Steve a question about success. Yeah, because, you know, we, we, we try to put those two together with money and success. It's not, mm-hmm. and, uh, he was saying it's not the same. It's not like you don't have to have money to be successful. It's not that. It's like your Hell, journey. Yeah. Well, but your question was about success. What? What was your question? I was saying you saying you don't have to have money to be successful. I said, how is that? How did? How do you judge that? And you said, well, hey, because listen, man. Here's the thing about success. What s- prohibits people from ha- having success? First of all, is starting. The number one uh, cause of failure is the fear of failure. Most people never even start. And then people equate success with the finish line. Now I'm successful. But that's not it, folks. The moment you make the decision to be successful, the moment you start the process the journey to changing your current status in any shape, form, or fashion, success has begun. Because I'm telling you, man, too many people sit still in their life and never make a move. You know, you've got to make a move. You've got to start the process. You know, there's an old poem. This is not it exactly, but it's as a stanza in a poem that I absolutely love. And this is not it verbatim, but this is what it talks about. The credit belongs to the man who is actually in the arena, whose face is marred with dust, blood, sweat, and tears. Not to those cold and timid souls in the stands who know neither victory nor defeat. You got so many people on the sideline talking about the warrior that's in the arena. Social media is full of it. And it's causing people not to move. It's making us stagnant because we're so worried about what somebody going to say if we fail. If you don't start, you fail in any way. If you in the stands talking about somebody else's success and you ain't got none, you fail in any way. I got news for you. If you in the stands talking about somebody else's success, you failing. Even if you got a measure of success because I got time. I got news for you. People that's really trying to be successful, really trying to be happy, they ain't got no, they, they have no time. They have no time to worry about somebody else. They ain't got time to mention nobody else. And man, you got to start thinking about that, folks, because we live in a world right now where the concern is more for likes and clicks than it is for honor and respect. What happened to that? What happened to the honorable man? What happened to the man uh, out of respect? What happened to men sitting down like men talking? Hey, bro, I got a problem with you. Let let me holler at you. What is all this Taylor Swift stuff? You got a problem with somebody. Now you putting them in a song. You got you got a problem with somebody. Now you on a little a little a little nobody ass podcast. Now all of a sudden you got yourself blowed up like you an authoritative figure. You're not. You're not. Look, man. If we get our focus on what we're doing. Once you begin the process to become successful, you are a successful person. Stop looking at the finish line as the form of success. 
The success is in the journey. The success is in the process. I'll give you an example. Let's say your goal is to become a millionaire one day. Let's just say your goal is to be a millionaire. Now, let's say your goal is to make 100000 Let's say your goal is to bring in 150000 whatever your goal is. And let's say you're starting with nothing today. And tomorrow you start to process and you make yourself $10. That's a successful day. Because guess what? You have began the process. And let's say in a week or so, you have made yourself a few hundred dollars. Yeah, you ain't a millionaire right now, but don't you see that you're on the way? Don't you see that you started the process? You are a success story waiting to happen, but you are in the process of writing the story. It's the people in the stands that's booing that ain't got no story at all. The credit belongs to the man who's actually in the arena, man. Them people in the stands that's booing you, who are they? They, as a matter of fact, you bought a ticket to see me. Whoa. But now you up in there talking about, I ain't this and I ain't that. You can't come out here and do none of this. None of this. You ain't on the radio. You ain't got no TV show. You quit talking about me. You ain't got no awards. You ain't got nothing I got, but you steady talking about me. Man, get yourself together. Start focusing on yourself, folks. Look at your personal journey. It's, it's hard to make it. You don't have time to worry about somebody else. All these people online talking about everybody. Man, get yourself together. And here's the code. You know, man, I'm going to say this again because I just learned it this year. You will never have a hater that's doing better than you. Never. <laughs> you will never have a hater that's doing better than you. So why are you worried about them when they boo? Boo all you want. I'm in the arena. I'm swinging for the wall. So what it didn't go over the wall? I hit a double. Well, at least I'm on second base. Your ass is in the stands. <laughs> Bye, Felicia. Bye. Those are my <laughs> closing remarks. I wish I had more time today. I'm out of time. Thank you, Junior. Y'all have a great day. Talk to God. He'd love to hear from you because I don't want to hear nothing you got to say. <laughs> Boo, Steve, shut up. You understand? For all Steve Harvey contests, no purchase necessary, void where prohibited. Participants must be legal U.S. residents at least 18 years old unless otherwise stated. For complete contest rules, visit steveharveyfm.com. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. 